Uh, so I've just been doing some cajon practice and uh, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and bring all my gear out here. Um, just gone for a little bit of a walk and I thought this would be a nice place to share some something that I've been working on today with you guys. So I wanted to look at one thing in particular today. I've just been having a lot of fun with that, that old foot slide. And I've been thinking about how I can really use the dynamic of that and, and, and make sort of more of an impact when the groove comes in. So I want to show you two fills today. Uh, and the first one's fairly simple, gives you a bit of an idea. And then the second one's got a couple of other things that you can uh, sort of practice and work on. So let's start off with the first one. Uh, it's just a 16th note fill, so just one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And we'll just do a full bar of that, followed by a full bar of groove. really makes that fill is just the couple of accents that we've thrown in there. So if we count it out, we get 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1. And then you're into the next bar and it's like those extra accents, they really set that up. Because what happens is you take out all the volume when you put the foot on the cup on, you slide it down, you've got that quiet kind of pitch bend and then you sort of hit them with, the, with a couple of accents and then it's into the next bar. So there's something that we can get started with. Let's check out the next one. We've got a couple of things going on there. The first half is a herter, which is uh, one of those rudiments. Anyway, I've got a video about that if you want to check that out. But then the second part of that is a triplet, where you kind of run down the rest of the fill and then really smack it down on beat one. So the trick with this one, and probably something that you could apply to the other one as well, is just to start off the fill just as quietly as possible and then use that dynamic of the pitch bend down to really make the impact on beat one of the next bar. And so with all this stuff about dynamics in mind, um, here's just a couple of ways that you can really uh, play with some of the quietest and loudest sounds on the cajon. Just comes down to a couple of interesting techniques that I've been sure, sort of trying to work on. So the first trick that I want to show you is just using one finger on each hand and then sort of building that up into using the whole hand just to create that dynamic shift. So by starting out that fill with just one finger and then two, then three, then entire hands, what I was able to do is really build up the body of the sound from almost nothing to as loud as possible. And more than just hitting the instrument with less force, uh, what really helps that dynamic, and this is kind of the, the main point, uh, we're altering not just the way that we hit it, but how we hit the drum. And that's a really nice way to practice dynamics. And so there we have a few things that I've been thinking about when I've been practicing cajon today. So we've got an easy fill, slightly more difficult fill, and kind of a, just a couple of tips on how to think about your dynamics and how to not hit the drum with more force, or less force to create dynamics, but change what you're hitting the drum with. Uh, just a few things to think about when you're practicing next. Uh, I'm probably going to continue practicing out here for a little while. It's kind of nice. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys on the next video anyway. So um, if you want to keep up to date with all my new videos, sort of checking these out for the first time, um, you can always subscribe to the channel and um, you'll be the first to know when there's a new video. So see you guys on the next one.